Hi everyone. So first of all, a very warm welcome to everyone. Um, it is a big privilege for me to speak in the conference FTC 2020, and I'm Imrojit Gupta Gupta from Capgemini. I work in a TDM team. I'm a developer at Test Data Management team in Capgemini, and my topic for the presentation is application of AI in test data management and more precisely application of machine learning and natural language processing in data profiling, which is an activity in test data management. So I'll be sharing my screen and, and then I'll go ahead with the presentation. So, uh, everyone able to see my screen? Please confirm once. Okay. So, as I will move ahead in the presentation, I'll first introduce you, uh, introduce you all to the problem statement and the challenges uh, we are facing, and how my idea can solve those. And after introduction and introduction of the problem and my solution, I'll go through how to implement it, what are the steps required to implement it. And I'll also show you a small demo application uh, how so that everyone can understand it better. We will prepare a live machine learning model here and see how it solves the problem. So let's go ahead. Uh, so AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning has been the buzzword in the industry for the last few years. And we can see in a lot of sectors it got implemented, uh, but for particularly test data management, we are still lacking some of the implementations. We are not seeing many implementations here in test data management. So my idea is to bring in these new technologies so that we can use them for better uh, improvement of the performance. And also there are a few problems which are not solved, which are yet to be solved. Uh, particularly in data profiling, which uh, AI and ML with natural language processing can solve it. So before going to the exact problem statement, I want to talk a little bit about what test data management is and what data masking is. Uh, just a brief introduction so that you could understand the problem a little bit better. So test data management is nothing but availability of test data in test environment database. So let's take an example. Uh, suppose there is a banking application. Okay, let's say uh, a retail bank like State Bank of India, which is having internet banking application. Now customers log into those applications. They can see their transactions. They can they, they can do new transactions, and all this data are stored in the live production database. Now, if someone wants to do any change in the application, any modification or new features they want to add in the internet banking application. They need to test it first in the test environment and then again make it uh, live in the production. So when they're testing it in the test environment, they do need test data for the testing. Now where they will get this test data? And this is where TDM comes into play. It copies a snap from the production database to the testing envi environment database. Uh, and then the testing application can connect to the test environment database and use those data for testing. Now there lies a problem when we are copying production data to the test environment database. The problem is there are these are realistic data which are present, real customer data present in the production database. And as we are copying it into the lower environment, we are copying sensitive PII information. Now like customer name, customer address, uh, customer phone number, these are all sensitive, uh, sensitive information which we are copying into the lower environment like test environment which could cause a lot of compliance issue, data leakage, and that could cause a lot of harm to the reputation of the organization. So data masking comes an important, uh, it plays an important role in the process of TDM. What it does is before loading the data from production to the test environment database, it masks the 
PII data, but it masks into realistic usable data. So if you can see in the example, the customer name originally, let's say it was John Doe, it's now masked into Mark Williams, which looks like a realistic data and could be used for testing in the test environment, but it is not giving away any PII information of the customer. Now, what is data profiling? So as we now understand that data masking is a pretty important activity in the TDM flow, data profiling is the first step when we are talking about data masking, when we want to do data masking. Data profiling is the identification of the sensitive data fields present in the database. Let's say there's an application which has a database which is using 100 tables. In those 100 tables, there are columns which are having sensitive PII information. So it is the activity of going through each and every table and scanning the tables and finding out which of the columns are having PII data. Now, this activity was generally done by manual method earlier, but there's a problem with that. First of all, it takes a lot of time to scan big databases, all the tables, and also it is highly prone to human error. And if there can be a misidentification of a particular field. So there is always a need of automated tools which could connect to the databases and perform the scans and then give us the fields which are having sensitive information and the tables. Now, there are currently some of the tools are available for doing that. But the problem is uh, they're using some traditional approach. And with those, there are some disadvantages for which it is missing to identify some uh, PII columns. And for that, those are getting into the, uh, into the non-prod environments. Original data is getting into the non-prod environments because we are not identifying those. We are not masking those and therein we are having a compliance problem. So what the current available tool does is they are, you, they are scanning the data in the table. And while they're scanning the data, they're using a traditional approach of matching a string pattern or regular expression match to find out the uh, underlying columns which can have the sensitive information. Let me just show you with an example. It would be better for you to understand. Let's say this is a table present inside an application. And these are the columns, column one, column two, three, and four. I have named it uh, just for, uh, uh, just to keep a generic column name. Uh, now you can see in column one and column four, we are seeing that there are names present. Uh, customer names are present in these, these two columns, whereas column two and column three, uh, these are not sensitive, these are not PII. So it is the expectation from the tool that when it will scan this table, it will give us in the report that column one and column four are having sensitive information. But currently the tools are missing to do that uh, because they are uh, using string match pattern or regular expression pattern. And there is no really way of putting that logic that James, when it sees a word like James, will understand that it's a name, whereas it, when it sees a word like talk or upset, it's not a name. We human beings can do it because our brain has been trained like that. We have come across various English words since our childhood and our brain got trained to understand which English words are names, which are not. But currently with uh, string pattern matching, we cannot encode that logic. So here comes my idea of using of natural language processing and machine learning. So natural language processing is nothing but the ability of the computer to understand human languages like English, French, Spanish, etc. So we want, when we are feeding the data, most of this data are actually like the names or whatever word we're feeding are normal in English. So the computer would be able to process it. And not only that, here comes the implementation of machine learning. We are going to build an artificial brain or an artificially intelligent machine, which will exactly mimic like our brain. Like our brain was identifying that James is a name and talk is not a name, it's a normal English word. The same thing, the same thing is expected from the machine to be done. And that is our agenda to prepare a machine learning model like that. Now, there are various advantages of doing those. First of all, we don't have to write those regular expressions and string patterns, uh, and there is no need of updating regularly the string patterns to catch new, catch new words. And secondly, NLP and ML has deep text mining and text analysis capabilities. It can understand a lot of patterns, which we, on when we are coding, we won't even understand those patterns in present, but with the capability of NLP and ML, it will understand by itself. And second, the most important thing is increasing of accuracy. 
we don't want any of the fields to be missed while in the data discovery phase or the data profiling stage. We don't want any of the fields to get missed during identification so that we cannot apply masking later on and the original data to flow in the non-prod environment. And third is with the availability of new infrastructures like cloud infrastructure and Google Colab, we are having huge processing capabilities. And because of that, complex machine learning models, NLP models could be made. We can tweak it according to our need. We can make it according to our need. A lot of new patterns could be done, could be, could be identified by taking this, the, the help of these infrastructures, we can run the complex models because processing power won't be a problem for us. Now, as I've shown you, uh, what, what the problem is, the challenges, the identification and the data profiling challenge, and what my idea is now, I'll show you how it can be implemented. Now, while I'll show you the implementation, I've also prepared a small demo application so that you can compare it, how I did it, and it would be better for you to understand. And uh, I hope uh, everyone will be, be able to catch it better. So here I've uh, prepared a very small machine learning model. It will classify CII data only name and by name only first name in common English first names. So when it, it is expected whenever we are going to give uh, English word to it or any word to it, it will identify which are names. And even if, and if it's not a name, it will just straight away tell to us that it's not a name. So I'll go through the implementation. Now the implementation actually will consist of two phases. First is preparing the machine learning model. And once the machine learning model is prepared, that is the NLP engine I'm talking about, and that can be used. So we can feed data to the NLP engine and it will tell us that uh, it will classify data for us, the PII data. So this is a typical process flow when we are preparing the machine learning model. Now, this is a supervised machine learning model. As we know, in supervised machine learning model, we need labeled data for training, okay? So you can think of it like this way. You are teaching the machine, just like teaching a kid, when, when we were young, you are teaching a machine by showing him some data. So these are the data, names, English names looks like this. Normal English words looks like this. And as you show him more and more data, it starts to learn by itself and it will have its own in intuition. And once it is fully trained, it would be able to understand uh, and it would be able to classify by its own. So we are doing that. So the first phase is collection of sample PII data. So let's say I'm doing for name, for my model, I'm classifying names. So I've collected a huge sample of names so that when I'm showing it to the machine, it would understand how names looks like. On the contrary, I should also have some sample non-PII data. That is normal English words, normal words, which are not names, so that it can have an idea what names looks like as well as not names, that is normal English words look like. And if I get these two big data sets, I, then I prepare the training data sets, labeled training data sets. I'll show you a small uh, overview how I did that. If you see, this is a big collection of names I've taken uh, here. And on the second tab, these are the words which are not names, normal English words. I've fed it to the, uh, to the machine learning model. And this is the ultimate data set I'm talking about, the training data set. And, and if you can see, they're labeled. So if there are words which are not names, it is labeled as no. And if there are words which are names like Aaron, it is labeled as yes. Now this data set, this is the final training data set. We are giving it to the machine learning model so that it can study by itself, it can learn by itself from it and it can develop an intuition. Now, this is the third step. Now, when we are feeding data, as I told you that natural language processing is the capability of computer to understand English or any normal human language. How it does is, it, uh, there is a thing called feature extraction or feature engineering in machine learning and also in NLP. What it does is, it takes a normal language and it quantifies it. It quantifies it into mathematical numerical expression. Okay, and then it can train itself. So these techniques like count vectorization, TFDIF, which is term frequency, document inverse frequency, these are techniques present in natural language processing, which takes a normal language and it mathematically, numerically makes a numerical representation. So before applying the algorithm for making the machine, it is important to do that. Now, I don't want to go too much into the mathematical details as we have a shortage of time, but I'll show you how I have done it in my code. So if you see, this is my training data set. And as soon as I got my training data set, I first 
used this count vectorizer and TFDIF transformer to mathematically to make the numerical representation, mathematical representation which I'm talking about. And once that is done, then we are applying a suitable supervised machine learning uh, algorithm. This is the classification. We are classifying period, so we will so we'll apply classification algorithm. For my model, I have applied a uh, support vector machine, which you can see here. Uh, and once you are applying the algorithm, then you are doing the training. So you are running the more training. Now, typically training will take some time. So I have already run this phase one portion in my code before starting the uh, presentation because it could take some time. So what I will do is now I'll show you after the machine has been prepared, after we have prepared that artificial brain, we are talking about how it functions, how it can be implemented and how uh, it will be able to classify. So let's go to phase two, that is the implementation. So once, the, once your NLP engine or the machine learning model is prepared, now it's ready for classifying. What you do is you need to feed data to it and it will be able to understand and generate a report for you and it will tell you where PII data is present or not present, okay? Just one thing before feeding the data to the NLP engine, we again need to, as I said, mathematically represent or numerically represent it. So we again need to do that feature engineering, feature extraction part. And once we do that, we feed it to the NLP engine and it will give us the final report. So we did that in our code as well. We are taking some data. I have taken a small, uh, this file, as I've shown you, this table, we will feed it to the machine learning model we have prepared in here, and we'll see if it can classify column one and column four as sensitive as they are containing names. So if we go to the code, uh, we are using this here. Just before feeding the table, just for a fun implementation, I've kept this. Uh, as our machine learning model is already prepared, uh, our intelligent model is prepared, we, let's see, let's give it some arbitrary words and, and let's see if it can classify names or not. Let's see if we give uh, onion this table. So it is classifying it as no. So we'll see given text is onion and it's saying no, it's not a name. Let's uh, give a common name. Like on. It is classifying it as yes. Mm. What if, if we give some arbitrary value? So it is saying as no. Um, let's try it with another name. So if you see, it is behaving like a human brain. Uh, it can understand which of the words it can use. Whenever we are giving names like Rachel and John, it is saying yes, but if you give something else, it is straight away telling to us no, it's not me. It has developed that intuition, like our human brain, it is behaving like that. Now, let's uh, use for the table which I have showed to you. Uh, let's try to identify, uh, we'll feed the whole table to it and let's see if it can scan the table columns and identify which are having PII data. So it's running. So it's showing report generated. Let's go to the report. This is the table report it's generated right now. And if we open this, we are saying it is saying that this particular table is having column one PIA data name, column four PIA data name, whereas two and three are not having any PIA data. And that is what was expected. You see column four and one having names where these are not having any names. So this is how we could implement our intelligent machine for identifying our NLP engine. Uh, also, I want to talk a little bit about open source natural language processing engines. So in phase one, we have seen that we have built a whole NLP engine. We have built a whole machine learning model. Now, there are projects where there could be lack of infrastructure, there could be lack of uh, machine learning expertise, machine learning engineers. In those projects, they can directly use open source NLP engines. There are various open source NLP engines available currently, which are trained by using state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms. So they could be directly implemented in phase two by skipping the phase one, so that instead of giving our own NLP engine machine learning model, we could use the open source machine learning model. I've given here example is Spacey. Spacey is a Python based uh, NLP engine, which is pretty popular nowadays. A lot of people are using it. Uh, and But there is some limitation when we are using open source model. That is, when we are preparing our own machine learning model, we can tweak it, we can customize it to the best of our own needs. But when you are using open source, there are certain things which will be limited. 
so that that those things we will have to keep in mind i'll show you an example so this is a implementation of spacey this code is an implementation of spacey so if, if we are doing the same thing let's in my model i have identified i've given some word and it was identifying it so let's say if i give here robert it should identify it as a name right but it is telling robert is not a name why this is happening is spacey cannot identify names if all the letters are in lower case so if i give robert where the r is in capital then it would identify it as a name so this is the limitation whereas in our model which we prepared we give it in lower case capital case doesn't matter it will always identify it so if you see if i give robert in small letters it is saying yes if i give robert in capital the first letter it is again saying as yes so our model does not have that limitation because i have done those three things when i was preparing the machine learning model so that is some uh, problems and limitations when we are using uh, open source nlp engines but still i would say if there is some limitation is of infrastructure or anything where phase one cannot be prepared we could surely use this open source nlp engines by keeping uh, it simple and so i can come to the conclusion that we can see that how seamlessly natural language processing with machine learning approach can identify sensitive elements and it is really fast it is not taking much time someone might tell that why can't we keep a whole database of names and whenever we get a new word and we find it in the database we scan the database and if it matches then we can return a result yes we can certainly do that but but imagine for every word if you scan a database where there are 50000 names how much time it would require for you to generate a report uh, it could be days in fact but here the model is doing it within an instant it is not taking up much space space it is not actually engulfing a whole database and a huge database i'm keeping in my computer nothing else it's a very small uh, machine learning model but it is having a lot of power within an instant it can identify names and also another thing i want to emphasize is uh, pii data can be even present in images so files which are not texts so how to identify uh, if someone gives you an image how to identify where pii data is present with the present all the, the technology we are having we cannot identify but uh, a machine learning model if we train the machine learning model like that way it will also be able to scan images and tell where pii data is present and then we can mask those by applying masking algorithms so the thing is machine learning model is very flexible however you want to train it for example i have trained it here for only identifying english first names but you train it by it could identify full english names it could identify uh, regional names like indian names or any other regional language names or any other address however you want to train it it could be trained and it could start to behave like that way it could it would develop an intuition and it could uh, be used for data profiling and also my again i want to state i want to emphasize all this is being done is to increase for increasing the percentage of accuracy of identification we don't want to miss any identification so that it won't be masked and then uh, there could be a compliance issue because original data will flow so as i've shown you uh, this particular file and some tables we have used this uh, idea uh, and implemented and we we have seen the older machines older models uh, or the traditional approach couldn't even identify one name whereas we are seeing there's a 100% accuracy in identifying the names and uh, with our own model and even when we're using open source models like open source and open engines like spacey we could see there's a 92% performance accuracy so out of 100 names it could identify at least 92 and we could understand that column is having uh, pii data so this is my idea uh, thank you everyone for listening and uh, if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask Okay, thank you everyone for joining me in my session. Uh, it's a really good experience.